Hey, it's Bill. I'm at my parents for uh, Christmas and Boxing Day. I'll be making my way home tomorrow. But here's my predictions for the first games of round three. All right, first two rounds are very exciting. We're on to round three. And we'll start off with the morning session. Morning session features a lot of Smiths. And for the most part, I like the Smiths. Now I will say right away, in terms of betting odds, don't like any of the day. I'm not gonna put any money down on bets. Uh, I don't see the value in it. Uh, first game up, again, maybe there's some value in it, uh, but I think it's just too close to call. And there's no one that's it's minus 110 both sides. So I like to see if I think it's too close to call and you got plus 120 or plus 130, I'm going to get on that game. But uh, definitely some games on Tuesday that I'm really, really excited about that I'm going to make some bets, some parlays, some bets. Uh, but on day one, I think you've got a couple clear-cut winners. Three of the games are clear-cut winners. And I think in the other games too, you just don't see the value. So let's go through the games. Let's start with the Smiths. Uh, first Smith up will be Ross Smith against... Um, Dirk Van Dyvenboder. Now, again, when I get in this game, these are two even players, flip a quarter. Uh, Dirk Van Dyvenboder, when he gets going, is a better scorer than Ross Smith. In the first round, Ross Smith was certainly not consistent. He was actually terrible against Jeff Smith. How many Smiths can you possibly have? And then in the second round, uh, against Stephen Bunting, played well, played crap, and then dominated the last set, hit some big outs. Dirk Van Dyvenboer against Boris Koltsov, lots of energy. I don't think the energy does him really well. Uh, it's, it's really too close of a game to call. Both at minus 110, it's just a guess. I'm gonna be honest with you here, I'm gonna be guessing. Um, it could go either way. Uh, I'm gonna lean though towards Ross Smith. We'll make it a Smith day, and I'll say that this one's gonna be a close game. I think it's gonna be a very close game, but I see Ross Smith sneaking over the line 4-3. Maybe we even get into extra legs. The next game up, I don't think is going to be as close as that one. Matter of fact, I don't think it's going to be close at all. Michael Smith against Willie O'Connor. Willie O'Connor obviously got a little bit of a nice draw. He had a really great game against Lauby, and then he got one of the seeds that you'd want to get, which is Durant. Uh, Michael Smith was great in the first round, or his first round matchup, his sec the second round. Hit a lot of 180s, but was never under pressure. Absolutely had no pressure in that game whatsoever. Dominated it. Will Willie O'Connor put some pressure on him, force those missed doubles? There's a chance. Willie O'Connor's solid player, but there's no way that Michael Smith's going to be outscored by Willie O'Connor. Uh, I think Michael Smith's going to be... The only thing he might be doing is looking forward to that Johnny Clayton matchup in the next round, which I think would be a doozy if it happens. So that might be leaning. I've seen him lose to John Lowe on this stage. I've seen him lose some bad matches in the World Championship, but I've also seen him win some big ones. I think the scoring is too much for Willie O'Connor. Again, I'm going to take a Smith. I'm going to take a Michael Smith 4-1 victory over Willie O'Connor. And the last matchup, Florian Hempel, Ray Smith, Raymond Smith. I, I, I thought Florian Hempel, I think Florian Hempel's going to win it. So I went to the odds. I was hoping for like a minus 120, minus 130. No, I'm looking at a minus 275. What? I don't think that there's some, there's some value there on Ray Smith. Raymond Smith, there's some value. I just don't think he's going to win, so I'm not going to put it on there. But I thought these would be a lot closer together. I don't think it's going to be this huge blowout as the odd state. I think a lot of people jumped on the fact that Florian Hempel beat Dimitri Vandenberg, and he beat him with 100 average. And Raymond Smith, I don't think he's going to put 100 average. I think he's going to put a low 90s, mid 90s. Uh, and, and what can Florian Hempel do? I think we've seen Florian Hempel doesn't get the shakes. He's beat two great players already. He's beaten Martin Schindler and Dimitri Vandenberg. Uh, where you look at Raymond Smith, um, you know, win over Devin Peterson. Jamie Hughes' game was a good game. So I think it's going to be a really close game. Both of these guys are going to maybe get a little bit on that edge because this is a winnable game to get into round four. If you're a Max Hop, you are definitely going to do what I'm going to do. You're going to cheer for Florian Hempel because Max Hop's at 64. If Ray Smith wins the next round in the next one, Max Hopp doesn't have a tour card. And if you think about the possibilities, there's a possibility that Ray Smith can get to the quarterfinal. There's definitely a possibility here. Because uh, then the next game up would be Merv King and Steve, Steve Lennon. I just think Smith's... Um, I can't, you can't take three Smiths. It'd be silly. Three Smiths? Take two Smiths. 
That'll take Florian Hempel to win this one 4-2. We then get into the evening session, which you know I think is going to be first game up. It's got a chance to be a good game. Uh, James Wade against Vincent Vandervoort. Certainly, the odds I I would lean towards James Wade winning this. So then I got to look at the odds and I go, oh, I'm not going to make anything out of that. Um, Vincent Vandervoort can beat James Wade. There's no doubt he can. I just look at past history. James Wade just clinical. He doesn't. He hasn't played well yet. And I'm telling you, this will be. If, if James Wade wins wins this one, he ain't winning the next one because I think he's got Joe Cullen next. But does Vincent Vandervoort have the game to take out of James Wade? Maybe he, he might have the game to, to be able to do it. I just don't see it. I think it'll be the closest game of the afternoon session, in my opinion. But I'm going to lean towards James Wade to take this. Again, please, James, no interviews. Don't care about your Monopoly game with your with your wife. I don't care about anything about your family. I don't care about your thoughts on anything because you're about you got the personality of an ant. So if you just keep your mouth shut, when when they ask you for an interview, just keep walking. Just say sorry. I'm not feeling worried about it, and walk away. But I see James Wade winning this one four two, and then in the last or second last match of the night, uh, Gerwin Price against Kim Hybrex. I would like to think this could be a roar fest. This could be the most noise on stage in a, in a match. I just don't think. Yeah, Kim Hybris is going to give her for sure. He's going to give her, and he's he can't be any worse than he was in the first round. He was god off on the first round against or second round match against Steve Beaton. He's got a lot of pressure. He's defending a lot of money. So even though he's ranked 32 in the tour card race, he's not. You want to be in that top 32 to get into the big ma the big the big tournaments. Again, I don't. Gerwin Price is going to lose to Kim Hybrex. You know, I can line it up and try to see it. I just don't see it. I see a lot of roaring. I see Hybrex getting a set, and that's all. I see some, every 180, you better, I don't know what you can do. You get some mute button on your, just when they put two in the, the triple 20, put your mute on, because the next thing is going to be a roar, both of them. Uh, maybe Kim Hybrex will run down the stage and start pumping it, and then Gerwin Price will be flexing. It'll be just a showmanship of whatever they got. Uh, but I like uh, Gerwin Price to win this one pretty handily, 4-1. And the last matchup of the night, I think, is just... This is a trip out to the woodshed. Clean it up. Uh, Johnny Clayton against Gabriel Clemens. Again, the only thing I can think of is Clayton's looking ahead. It doesn't strike me as the guy who would look ahead. Gabriel Clemens, let's be honest, against Louis Williams was not very good. He's not going to get a guy missing nine doubles on the first leg with Johnny Clayton, although certainly Johnny Clayton can do it. He's, he might get a couple miscounts from Johnny Clayton. That's possible. Um, maybe get a set. I don't think he's even going to get a set. So I'm going to take Johnny Clayton to win this one 3 nothing. So we're back at it. Darts, I'll be doing these are my predictions. I'll give my predictions for the um, for Tuesday. I do have some bets for Tuesday, so I will leave that as a tickle your butt with a feather. I just don't like any of the odds tomorrow. I don't see myself landing on anything, so I'm not going to make any bets. But I definitely have a parlay uh, for Tuesday and Wednesday, and I definitely have a outright winner who I do like on Tuesday. But again, I'm going to tickle your... So you might watch the next video. Again, you'll notice I'm, my scenery in the back is a little bit different. My parents' house had fantastic Christmas and Boxing Day here. Going to be making that travel back home, apparently in freezing rain. So we're going to be taking first thing in the morning off. I'll probably miss that first game. But uh, definitely watch it on the, on the replays and go through it. Give my you know thoughts on the games tomorrow, my predictions, and also it's halftime. Cowboys are winning 42 to seven. I think I'm comfortable to go to bed now. As a Cowboys fan, you're probably going, "What the hell are you thinking?" If there's any team that can give up 35 points in the first half, the Cowboys are that team. I'm going to take a little bit of a gamble here and say that they're going to win. I might watch the first series. If they make it 49-7, I'm definitely in bed. But uh, it's a great day for the Cowboys today. Hopefully they got a chance at the first seed if Green Bay's got to lose a game. But I'm um, really happy about that. And then hopefully sometime next week the NHL gets going again where I can actually give some leaf um, predict or my leaf analysis. But I'm really excited for the darts right to January 3rd. I think it's a day off when the New Year's Day. Really excited. I think we're going to have some barn burner matchups. There's going to be some fantastic games. I don't think tomorrow is the best of those games. Tuesday and Wednesday look better. And then when you get into the round four and quarterfinals, semifinals and finals, it's going to be fantastic matches. Hope everyone enjoys the darts. I certainly will. Talk to you tomorrow.